it's interesting how the more often I do this bike packing thing, the less neat this gear assemblage becomes. There are my uh, panniers and my frame bag. This is all the gear I knew this time, or a couple of fork bags. Here's the gear, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, tent with poles, the blue pillow, the yellow sleeping mat. So you notice the tent isn't that nicely done. Here's my CPAP system. Don't have the mask yet um, because I need to sleep tonight. <laughs> um, and uh, four Metastrom batteries, super expensive. A bunch of stupid medical stuff because I'm still suffering from itches and stuff, as well as the usual toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, insect repellent, camp suds, chafe cream, insect repellent, band-aids, gauze tape, etc. Minimal electronics. I'm taking a little mini computer. I've got three, count them, three batteries there. Portable anti-bear speaker. It's really loud. I'm going to use that in the bush. Um, food. So some uh, snack bags, really delicious oatmeal to get myself started in the morning. Freeze dried meals, those are really good. And uh, Cliff's bars because they're essential. Real coffee and then the actual cooking kit. Again, pretty minimal. I splurged and got myself an extra mug for this trip. A couple of isobutane tanks, uh, the little stove, lighter extra lighter and if we look there's a third lighter somewhere leather man utility tool uh bear spray and bear spray holder as well as a uh, an air horn again anti-bear uh, puffer jacket raincoat other raincoat um, some clothes mostly um uh, merino wool this time, mostly because of my itch, but also it's a lot lighter and a lot better for me than cotton. So, uh, four pairs of socks, uh, two t-shirts plus the one I'm going to be wearing, a long sleeve shirt, a long sleeve shirt, my bench sweatpants, which actually stopped a dog's bite from penetrating. Pretty impressive. Crocs. And there's my uh, bag and then my bike repair kit. So the usual multi-tool, um, lights, uh, patch kit. I'm riding tubeless tires, but I'm bringing tubes, three extra tubes in fact. I only see one of them here, but the other two are here somewhere. Um, waterproof gloves, regular biking gloves bug jacket and that's everything so there's the bike first time this one's going bike packing it's my uh, Kona Sutra LTD with uh, a rack that I got separately um, and uh, the uh, front Ortlieb bag which is you know, pretty pretty terrific this little uh, bottle holder and uh, I'll attach everything on here and uh, make it go. That's it for the, uh, the setup video. This is Village Gagne. It's about 10 kilometers away from home. I'm started on my ride. Here's my bike, which has made it for 10 kilometers, so yay. Um, my intention on this trip is to drive, <laughs> cycle north to Manawaki, it'll take me five days, have a rest day in Manawaki, then push forth further north to the Reserve Phonique La Veronderie. Uh, I always struggle with that French name, but I think I got it this time. Uh, it's a large wilderness area in northern Quebec, and I'm really looking forward to cycling through it. It'll have everything, squirrels, chickmunks, deer, bears, mosquitoes, black flies, you name it. I'm all ready for it and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, even the sound here, here in the background is 
my, one of my anti-bear measures should be louder though. Well, here I am at the Rideau River. I don't have the good speaker on the phone yet, so sorry about that. But uh, I've made it to one of my first checkpoints. Um, today I woke up in the motel and cycled along uh, Searville Road, which is lots of fun, to the Best Buy to pick up an InReach Mini because I lost the previous one. Ended up taking a taxi out to the Maryville Best Buy and back for the InReach Mini, which I now have and I'm charging. And now I have 50 kilometers to ride to Wakefield and it's 1 p.m. So lots of fun. <laughs> But, hey, it's all an adventure. So here I am in Gatineau. I just came over the Alexandra Bridge. The other bridge was closed, so I've gone way out of my way. So I have to figure out where I'm going now. And yeah, joy, traffic. Okay, I've cycled through the area behind me there. It's the parkland along Rito River in Gatineau. This is where it ends for me, and I have to take this road to connect with the Chelsea Trail. Bleh. Halfway up the hill of death. Going into Chelsea. I've finally made it to the Chelsea Trail. After climbing that hill of death, I stopped in Chelsea for some lunch and a nice taco bowl and lots of water, and I restocked my water. And now I'll be following this trail all the way through to Wakefield. Uh, it's kind of loose gravel, not that loose, so it's not as easy to pedal on as I would like, but it should be fine. And it's a rail trail, so it should be relatively level. No hills of death. Although I just went up a bit of a hill there. <laughs> so another detour. And this one goes straight uphill. Great. Well, I'm back on the trail again. That was a pretty miserable detour. Straight up along the highway for a bit and then straight down. I didn't enjoy it either way, which really takes all the fun out of going uphill. Anyhow, back on the road. So, it's yet another detour. This time, though, I was able to <laughs> cut through the backyards of a few people there and get around it. So, but yeah, otherwise that would have been a really nasty detour. Real nice view though here, eh? So I made it to Wakefield. I'm staying at this old mill tonight. I'm gonna have supper right in that restaurant there. Okay, here I am in Chelsea, Quebec. Not Chelsea, Wakefield, Quebec. There it is. I like this view better. So today I'm planning to do about 40 kilometers. I'll go up to Low where I'll have lunch and then that's where I'll connect with the trail. That's 23 kilometers of highway riding because things aren't all connected up here. And then I'll hit the trail, I'll do about another 20 kilometers and then I plan to wild camp. Also got, finally, this GPS, very important, so that Andrea can track me and I can call for help if I'm attacked by a bear. So I'll be testing that today as well. Here we go. Well, after 23 kilometers of highway riding, which I did not share with you, I'm at Low, Quebec and finally on the bicycle trail that begins here. Uh, don't make low your pit stop. Um, there really isn't very much here. Uh, there's a restaurant that closes at two. I got there at five minutes to two, so I got myself a nice club sandwich. I thought there were stores, but there aren't. There's a saddlery and there's a hunting and fishing store and that's it. But uh, anyhow, I'm gonna cycle down here for about 20 kilometers and uh, enjoy the nice weather.
here I am out in the country and you can see it's uh, pretty nice out here. Just making the transition from what I guess was more farmland in uh, Kazabazua, what a name. Uh, and now it's a little more wildernessy. By wildernessy, I mean swampy and forested and hilly. Although since I'm on a rail trail, the hills aren't that bad. Although there's some pretty tough gravel spots there. I mean, have your gravel tires. <laughs> Uh, stayed overnight at the rest stop at Casabazua. Uh, wasn't great. I mean, it was fine. Nobody bothered me or anything like that. But it's sort of located inside a very widely spread out community full of agro pickup trucks and uh, that sort of thing. Um, but, you know, and it rained on me last night too. That doesn't help either. And there's probably going to rain on me a bit today. But I'm up early in the morning and ready to go. So let's get at her. Get her patter. So that soft gravel track was basically unrideable. Fortunately, I was able to find a road that ran parallel. But then at last, here's what they're planning. And that is very rideable. So thanks. Oh, look. Birds, good birds flying in the sky. So I've set up my tent in the place called Camping Carpe Diem. It's in the uh, Blue Sea region, which is partway through Gracefield and Manawaki. A little off the track a bit. Um, it's about four kilometers, maybe a bit less from the biking trail, which sounds good. But if you look at the terrain, you might realize that maybe it's a bit hillier. Actually, it was stupid hilly. I climbed about 100 meters, 120 meters in that distance. Uh, well, that's what I went up. I went up and down and up and down and up and down. Horrible. <laughs> uh, on the other hand, after that gravel turned to pavement, it's been paved all the way through so far. So that's pretty nice. Just finished my supper, which is why you see various camping implements on the table here in front of me. And my rain jacket all ready. It's supposed to start raining tonight with thunderstorms hitting around 6 a.m. It's supposed to rain a lot tonight. And I had some leakage yesterday from whatever rain came through. So a bit worried about that, but uh, you know, if worse comes to worst, there's a building down the hill. I'll just slide on down and, and take shelter in the building. Um, oh, and they said they'd drive me out of here. So I don't have to go down and up and down and up and down all those hills. Meanwhile, enjoy the view. I mean, this is pretty nice. And it's not currently raining. I'm at the Blue Sea Trail here. There's a Blue Sea stop here on the trail. Uh, trail de Gravage. And it's paved. They drove me down here from the campsite from last night. So I didn't have to do those hills again. And all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, those hills were brutal. So I got a lift. So here's the the bike setup, all ready to go. Trying not to get unwilling people into my video. Uh, so there it is. Sorry about the shake. And 
what I've noticed, well, one thing I've noticed uh, for the paved part as compared to the unpaved part is there is a lot more use of the paved part. I mean, people are using this trail. Uh, it's hard to do a video without running into them. Well, especially right here at the shelter. This is a great little shelter, by the way. Check this out. This is Blue Sea. And there are other shelters sort of similar to this. You could take shelter from the rain in here. You can fix your bike here. There's air. The only thing missing, really, and the thing that I always really look for when I'm on the trail is water. Oh, water. Water is everything. Water is life. I've said that before in some of my previous videos, and it holds true even to this day. So anyhow, the other thing I want to say to start off today, day five, it's not quite the same sort of videos as before. Oh, I see people down there are videoing too. Uh, is I meet many more people on the trail than I do on a day-to-day -day basis. And I find that interesting. And that's one of the great things about doing these sorts of trips is getting out and seeing people. Uh, you know, and, and there are stories, but it isn't about the story. It's about, to, for me, it's about the picture, uh, the totality of what they represent. One person, I stopped yesterday, day before, I forget which, <laughs> um, at a little fruit stand, fruit and vegetable stand. It was still on the highway, so I guess it was the day before. And uh, there was a team attending the uh, cash. And my strawberries said, you need a bag? And I said, no, they won't last long. And she said, are you on a biking adventure? And I said, yeah. And talked a little bit about what I was doing, and where I was going. But what was everything that she wanted to say was in that question. Just the, the, the way she said it, the tone she had when she said it. It was like she's seen others. She knows about it. She knows about the genre. Uh, and I got the sense, yeah, this is something that she wants to do. And she was sort of asking it wistfully. Or in uh, Gracefield, I ran into Leo, who was sitting on his porch on the road just down from the church. I was taking a picture of the church. It was in the shadow, so it wasn't the greatest picture. Now I have to show it, I guess. Um, when I'm coming back, he says, uh, nice church, eh? Um, well, he said it in French first, but then he said it in English. I said, yeah, and we got to talking for a bit, and, uh, you know, he's a very religious guy, and he has a very distinctive house, Leo does, right on the main street of, uh, of Gracefield, and uh, he's a believer, um, very strong believer, but he also believes that the organized church is hypocrites, all of them, he says. Okay, well, that's fine, you know, I mean, I can believe that, but... His house, it's all painted black and his windows are boarded over and his door is boarded over. It's because people have been smashing his doors and his windows. I guess they don't like what he happens to believe. And yeah, I had a nice chat with him. He said, come back and talk anytime. I really appreciate that. And uh, you know, those are the sorts of things that you see out on the trail. And that's what I really appreciated about it. I'm sort of walking here along here to let those other people get back to their bicycles. I kind of hijacked their bikes as background scenery. And again, they don't want to be in my video. Why would they? Um, it's different people from the other person. So today, uh, I'm back here at uh, Blue Sea. Um, shorter ride today, I think it's about 36 kilometers. And I'm going to be heading into Manawaki. I'm going to have a rest day. I have an online meeting I have to go to. Oh, and I will say, though, that camp, despite all the hills, maybe I'll talk more about it a bit later. I probably will. Fantastic camp. I was, I was really blown away by the setup that they have there. And, like, yeah, they're solidly booked, like, forever. But, uh, you know, what a great camp site. Anyhow, that's it for now, and I'm signing off. So that's Blue Sea Lakes there.
pretty nice. And the trail just follows the lake. And there's all kinds of cottages and stuff here along it. It's all lots of boat houses and stuff. Wanted to talk about that campsite. So I will. There we go. I don't know how stable that is, but that's pretty good. Uh, not that stable. I wonder if there's a way to attach it so that it does work. I guess I'd need a light too. <laughs> All right. So there's a risk at any time that my phone might fall off, but I'm running that risk. The campsite. So, yeah, you have to go up and over these crazy hills to get to it off the trail. I suppose if you're cycling up here or hiking up here, you could get you the shuttle you know, from the uh, parking lot to the campsite itself. I get the sense that they do that a lot. And uh, Vicky, who's one of the people who runs it, said that they used to be located in uh, Gracefield, right on the trail. So, of course, they have a close connection to the cyclists, obviously. And uh, eventually they were able to get this piece of land and set it up this very up and down piece of land it's really hilly that campsite and as a result you cannot drive to your spot it's not one of those no instead what they do is you drive to the entrance and then unload your gear whatever it may be and then they have an ATV with the trailer and they'll haul your gear to your campsite um, usually at the top of the hill somewhere which is pretty good because you know you're not going to be flooded out on the top of the hill last night super rainstorm big huge rainstorm and just as i'm getting set up and i'm all focused on that got stung by a wasp right here ouch uh so that was fun and uh so I made sure I was all set for the big, huge rainstorm. And uh, it came, predictably. Put more than an inch of water down. I know because I put, up a put out a cup so that I could drink it, and I did. It was beautiful, beautiful, cool rainwater. My tent survived much better than I thought it would, but I uh, was fussing around with a rain jacket in the tent and accidentally rolled over on my glasses so my glasses are a bit damaged still all in all a good experience there you know as these things go so it was called camping carpe diem definitely recommended I've made it to Manawaki. highway we're going under there. Glad I don't have to cross that.
about the job that the Orioles did in scouting and then employing a lot of trust in the first go around with Flaherty by far and away in cruise control. Oh, I'm so glad I'm not out in that. Wow. This is a nasty one. I'm doing this because the lights went out and the internet's down in my room, so I can't do anything else. Actually, it's slowed down a bit now. This is day seven, and that sound you hear is a motorcycle pulling away. Uh, I'm about, I don't know, eight kilometers north and a little bit west of Manawaki. This road has way too much traffic for my taste. Um, but what can you do? It's a Saturday morning and everybody's getting out into the bush. Um, this is the uh, Riviere Désert. It's the same river that runs through Manawaki. And this is the road that I'm on. It's kind of a quiet country road with quite a bit of brush and that around it. We're just on the edge of the wilderness. Over there, that's the wilderness. That's when things get really interesting here we're still sort of in farm country anyhow it's day seven and uh, I spent a rest day yesterday in Manawaki I did not bother recording any video because why would I I did laundry I got my glasses repaired I got some uh, silicon sealant for my tent fly and sealed the tent fly. Not that I got a lot of rain during that last storm, but you know, it couldn't hurt. I had a big pizza <laughs> and a couple of beers. I watched a ball game in French, because they don't get it in English, and generally had a pretty relaxed, busy day. I also got some work done. I had a 4 a.m. meeting yesterday, so that was fun. Uh, but you know, it was a good break and I needed the break. I just wish the bed had been better because now my back is sore. So anyhow, that's where we're at. Uh, here I am. And here's the bike. And here comes another car. So I'll end this video here. I'm not really remembering to video the best bit, <laughs> so I'm sorry about that. It was this lovely covered bridge that I went over, no video. And then uh, these rapids that I went over, no video. There's the Blue Jay. Sorry about that. Uh, so anyhow, I had a nice lunch at the rapids. I just sat on the bridge and made myself so, uh, a mixture of oatmeal and uh, granola and nuts with hot water very good but as always I'm running low on water and so that brings me here because um, I've got less than a liter left my big three liter bag well I was going down a hill pretty fast hit a bump that I couldn't avoid and uh, tore a great big gash in it spilling a whole pile of water and now I can't carry three liters of water plus my bottles anymore so a little bit low but I'm going to stock up on some water here. I've got a water filter and I'll show you that. And uh, 
that'll probably do me, I hope. If you don't hear from me again, it did not do me. Okay, here it is. It's a little green, but it's not that bad. And I don't know what color it'll be after I filter it, but I'll filter it and it should be perfectly good. <laughs> there were fish swimming in there and I was afraid I would catch one. There was a little frog. There's still fish swimming in there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're there. All right, let the filtering of the water commence. And nothing. Why? I maybe had to do something. I don't know, there's stuff happening there. It just has to work its way through the filter, I guess. Yeah. I remember this being a lot faster before. Probably should have tested this out. Oh, there we go. All right, it just took a bit to work its way through the filter. Okay. Ah, uh, I got bugs biting me. All right. It's gonna come here. There was a drop. <laughs> Ouch, it's biting me. Anyhow, you get the idea. Okay, so that didn't really work out the way I wanted it to. I guess I'm supposed to prime the, the filter or something ahead of time. I'll have to check on the internet. So I got, I don't know, a few teaspoons worth of water. I guess that's not, I guess that was working. It's just I didn't have the patience for it and I was being eaten by a horse fly. Uh, so that wasn't good. But I did get water. And what I'll do is I'll take this with me. When I find a campsite and I have some time, I'll just settle in and filter it there. So it's two liters instead of three, well, two liters and a teaspoon instead of three. Uh, but it'll have to do for tonight, and maybe tomorrow, depending on what I find ahead. Who knows what I'll find ahead? That's the whole mystery of this big <laughs> adventure thing. I'm just waiting for my uh, Mexican style beef bowl to uh, fully rehydrate. It's not quite there yet, but it's almost there. I'm set up here, as you can see, in front of my tent. And I'm at a place called Peaceful Valley, which turned out to be only about three kilometers down the highway. I think it's 114, 118. Uh, I should know these things. Um, once I got onto it. So that's pretty nice. Uh, they have free Wi-Fi there and I was listening to the ball game a bit. And I wanted to come here, apply the second layer of silicon to the tent, which I have done, and uh, set up and have some supper. Uh, and do all that before the bugs come out and the bugs will be coming out there. I already had to give myself a dose of uh, mosquito spray and I wanna get into the tent before it gets serious which will happen as soon as uh, this tent is in the shade. So um, I'm eating now. So pretty good day today. 45 kilometers, 45.9 if you want to be precise, which is about five more than I wanted to do, but this worked out really well. 365 meters climbing, which is the biggest climb day. Uh, I probably could have done a lot more climbing had I chosen to go into the Zek, but I chose not to go into the Zek 
because uh, because of the climbing. So um, I'm not sure how much more there will be between now and La Verandre. See, just, just as I started this, somebody turned on some machine over there, but that's what happens. I guess either the pickup truck is idling or whatever. Um, anyhow, I'm about 68, something like that, kilometers away from La Domaine, which is the place where I want to sort of set up home base in La Verandre. So I'm looking at, that's too much. I, I don't want to do that in one day. Also, there's a significant climb there, I think. Um, so I'm going to find a spot uh, partway between here and there, which means in terms of distance, two relatively easy days with respect to distance, but you know, the climbs I think will more than make up for that. So anyhow, I'm gonna have my uh, Mexican style beef bowl now, and we'll see how that goes. Gonna go back into the, uh, the place over there, have a shower, which I definitely need after today and then settle in early. Um, maybe even I can find out what the final score of the ball game is. Who knows? <laughs> All right, talk to you tomorrow. It's day eight. And I spent last night at uh, Peaceful Valley. It's an SO station on the highway. So after about a 45 kilometer ride, it's a pretty good ride, pretty nice day, as you saw. And at Peaceful Alley, I was able to get water, so uh, I can go back and think about that water filter later. So a couple uh, kilometers down from Peaceful Valley are Chutes Quinn, and these are Chutes Quinn. And I have to be careful on these stairs because some of the stairs are missing. So I do want to watch out for what I'm doing. So I'm trying to remember to do video of interesting stuff. And here's the interesting stuff. Wow. Those are pretty good. So, shoot Quinn, everybody. So, I'm going to have lunch here and uh, then keep going. Well, I've made it to La Verandrie. Passed through the gate, oh, I guess about an hour ago now. I'm on the highway, as you can hear. Headed up by maybe 10 kilometers from my campsite, give or take. Uh, yeah, it's uh, been a road of some pretty significant hills, big ups and big downs. So I've been uh, working pretty hard here, but uh, boy, this landscape is beautiful. No bears yet. So. That really, oh, and I've been listen, able to listen to the ball game, and that makes me happy because the Blue Jays are beating the Red Sox. Nothing makes me happier than that, except maybe Blue Jays beating the Yankees. So, that's her for now. So, glad you've been with me. Okay, I'll report back in when I get to my campsite, I guess. Okay, I'm too tired to put on the microphone. That was just horrible. Huge hills. Anyhow, I made it 42 kilometers, 43 kilometers, 402 meters elevation. Ah, yeah, supper time. Okay. I made it to my campsite, I'm exhausted, and I'm in my tent. That was brutal. 
43 kilometers, 402, did I do this already? 402 meters elevation. And mostly I'm on because I just heard a loon on the lake. And how cool is that? Good morning. It's day nine. And welcome to Stevens Water Factory. Got the uh, water filter working. Yeah, it just needed to sit overnight with some water in it. Now it's just working fine. I need a better setup. I wish there was a way I could hang that bag, but I'll figure something out. I've got rope. And here's the boiling center. Because <laughs> uh, I've been boiling. Why am I producing water, you may ask? Well, not just because I'm beside a crystal clear lake, though I am. Um, yesterday, I have no idea what this looks like, but well. <clears throat> yesterday was brutal. You probably got that impression from the other video. Uh, I went through about two and three quarters liters uh, in the time that I was cycling, which is to say all of my water. And uh, I asked them, <laughs> I asked them at the gate, is there water here? And they said, yes, but it's not potable. So I, stupid me, thought tap, something like that. I knew I'd have to go through this, but no, it, it, they meant there's a lake. <laughs> so uh, anyhow, so I got this water out of the lake. There's a nice beach there. It's not even that cold, actually. I had to walk out into the lake to get it. Um, and now I'm producing water. So there you go. found a really nice spot here to rest and recharge batteries and so on but now I've got to bug out because the rain starts soon and by five it should be a torrential downpour five is when I was planning to leave this place I only have about 10 or so kilometers to go but I need to be set up before the rain starts falling so this is Le Domaine uh, we'll see it again on the way back Okay, five kilometers up this road. I'm about five kilometers north of Vudemen. Came here pretty quickly. Still going quickly. Will this be an okay road or a road of hell? I don't know yet. This is called hike a bike and it's what you do when the hill is too steep to cycle up. It's practically too steep to walk up, but fortunately you can lean on your bike and hike a bike. Okay, so this is definitely the road from hell. <laughs> uh, it's got some pretty major ups and downs. But what you're probably wondering is, why am I walking right now? No, it could have been worse. Could have been much worse. Uh, so, steep hills. Gravel hills. And uh, despite putting on the brakes, I'm still going at a fair speed. And one of those bounces bounced my phone right out of my front carrier. <laughs> And uh, I didn't notice it was gone until I went to take a picture at the top of the hill. So 
I didn't know where it was, but I just went walking because I knew where I'd taken a picture. And yeah, it was right where I'd taken a picture. So maybe it didn't even bounce out when I was going down a hill. I don't know. Anyhow, I got it back and I'm walking back up the hill. So here's the lichen that saved me a whole lot of heartache. I stopped to take a picture of this and that's when I noticed my phone was gone. Okay, well, I eventually made it to the camp and I got the tent set up. As you can see, I'm in it. And uh, before that I had something to eat, so I've been able to have a hot meal and get into my tent and get everything set up. And it was raining just a second ago. It stopped, but it's gonna rain off and on and then it's gonna pour. And I'll be hunkered down here in my tent and uh, yeah, it'll be less than exciting. So I might find myself the time to give you a, give you a listen to the rain. Time will tell. Day 10, rain. It's day 10 here in La Verandrie. I've just done this video while the setting was on camera. So I took a picture at the start and a picture at the end. That was bright. So I'm just, it's going to be totally different this time. And the first version is lost for eternity. Just wandering through the forest here near where I'm camped. Um, Cal Calabogi, something five kilometers, anyhow. I'm terrible with proper names. So I'm just wandering through the woods here looking for bears. You might think, oh, don't do that. But first of all, the odds of encountering a bear are extremely low. Secondly, they're black bears, so they're not going to attack me, probably. Though, <laughs> I left my bear spray and my loud horn, my um, air horn, back at the campsite with my bicycle. So. But that's the real danger with bears, is like sneaking up on them and surprising them. So here I am babbling to myself in the middle of the woods probably not going to sneak up on a bear. Anyhow, this is La Verandrie. Uh, it's pretty typical of every bit of it I've seen so far. The soil's really sandy. It's all sand. Um, other things I didn't bring with me. My bug jacket, but I don't need my buck ja bug jacket. Yeah, there's bugs, mosquitoes, and things, but not really more than I'm used to. Um, I also didn't bring my insect spray, so I'm getting bit a little bit, but nothing significant. It's day 10, I think. I have to do the math these days to figure out which day, I'm at, which day it is, and that's a good thing. Oops, there's one right in my ear. Go away, mosquito, go away. Um, so I'm camped here. This is a rest day, kind of by necessity. If you look at the sky, this is as nice as it's been all day. Actually, it's great compared to what it has been. There's about 30 millimeters of rain overnight, according to my tin cup measurement. And... Uh, a little leakage in the tent not serious but it kind of disrupted my sleep big problem is one of my CPAP batteries died which means right now all I have are three partially charged batteries for tonight it takes about two hours three hours to recharge them which I can do I'll leave them in on the way back 
but it's a long ride tomorrow to get to the next campsite but we'll see if i can charge one or two in that amount of time at least it'll be sunny tomorrow so they say isn't this gorgeous so many different types of trees here i'm a bit surprised i've seen pretty much every kind of pine and spruce no cedar I haven't seen any cedar doesn't mean it's not here it just means i haven't seen it and then as well an awful lot of deciduous trees and bushes and bushes oh mosquitoes geez here's some sort of maple and there's more of these little spruce there i don't know what that is some ferns more maples and we can see poplar we can see some birch chopped up down there check out this lichen there's a lot of this in the park isn't this something yeah it's like you know the, the first sign of soil so i guess what happened here is they must have dug it out or maybe there was some flooding or who knows what right and uh so it exposed the sandy soil and then the first thing to come to it is the lichen. Now, I'm not going to go all the way down that road just yet because I want to take some photos while I'm up here because this is actually a pretty picturesque area. Last night, the neighbors in their nice caravan and their nice greenhouse invited me over for some chicken soup. Getting eaten by mosquitoes here now. My mistake, not bringing spray. Um, and uh, chicken soup led to some sort of blueberry confection, which was delicious, and a little red wine and a nice conversation. That's the sort of thing that happens when you're bike packing. I've found you meet these people you'd never meet otherwise. Uh, they're an older couple. Him, him, his daughter. No, his daughter. His brother died when he was 67. Uh, which kind of relates personally to me because I'm 64, right? Look at that, isn't that something? And uh, he sort of looked at his life and said, what am I doing? And sold his business. Yeah, he'd been a farmer, he'd been in construction, then he built a business. He decided, now I'm going to take time to do what I want to do. And I think that's a nice way of thinking. I think that's a great way of thinking. One more thing, and I'll probably do another video later if I think of more things to say. It's quiet here, except for the wind. And the, the crows fly really low. And it's really neat because you can hear them as they fly over. Floop, 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 floop. Never heard that before. I didn't know what it was at first. But yeah, it's the crows flying overhead and probably other birds as well. And there's a, there are the loons out singing on the lake. I'd like to capture that sound. I don't know if I can. It's pretty faint for some reason. Anyhow, that's it for now. This is my view of La Verandrie, a place that's mostly sand, a little lichen, and a lot of trees. Well, as you can see from the sky behind me, it's pretty early in the morning, day 12, and I'm hiking a bike. It's that first big hill on the road from hell, and yeah, it is a road from hell. <laughs> oh, I almost wiped out several times on it. So I'm leaving this spot, going to the next. Yesterday it rained pretty much all day, except for the short time you saw me out there on the video. That was it. The rest of the time I spent in my tent listening to an audiobook. What book, you ask? Wild by Cheryl Strayed. I've seen the movie more than once, which I quite liked. So I thought I'd read the book because <laughs> all the personal stuff aside, it's 
you know, congruous with my experience out here, carrying too much, etc., etc. Except, of course, her journey's a bit longer, uh, but I'm a bit older. So anyhow, I'm gonna keep hiking my bike, and uh, I've got about 50 kilometers to go today. That's why I'm starting so early. So we'll see how it goes. I've arrived at my campsite and I've been greeted by the campsite greeter. So it was about 55 kilometers all together today, beginning with the road from hell. And then I stopped at Le Domain for about three hours to get my uh, get all my stuff charged, dry out all my equipment, etc. And then I cycled and uh, <laughs> most of it was downhill. There were a couple of pretty brutal uphills, but most of it was downhill. And I marveled to myself, really, I, I can't believe that I did all of that uphill the other day. Because, wow, <laughs> that's an awful lot of uphill. So it only took me about three hours to get from uh, Le Domaine to here, so which is pretty good. Here, by the way, is Camping de la Vallée, um, which I guess is supposed to be one of their premium sites. Uh, they being CPAC, the parks organization that runs La Vallandry. The water is not drinkable. There's something in it. Uh, it looks like an oil film. Uh, there appears to be no staff. Things are pretty run down. Half the camp is closed. It reminds me of how decrepit the facilities were on Anticosti Island. And, you know, they're beginning to paint a picture of a government that doesn't really care about its campsites. That must be one of the water supply lines. Hopefully it's providing better water for the showers than we're seeing for the, uh, the faucets. So anyhow, I'm just in here. The one good thing is that there is a shower. We'll see if it works. It might not. Whoops, I was scratching myself. And, hitting my microphone. Uh, yeah, I'll let you know how, how it went. Okay, well, if you wonder what I look like with short hair, probably something like that. Uh, see if I can find my path again. I should also mention, there's almost nobody else here. This campsite virtually deserted. And that seems to have affected Pretty much all of the whole region it's not just the campsites you can't count on google for anything it says there's a store yeah there was it's closed now it says there's a restaurant yeah once it's closed now so it's the region's fallen on hard times and i guess it was the loss of tourism that did it um so anyhow i'm in there having my shower the water can be best described only as lukewarm hot would be to give it more credit than it deserves. Oh, purple berries. Check that out. Almost certainly inedible. <laughs> so, um, I'm taking a shower and probably the only other person who wants, who's in this campsite, comes in and starts to take a shower, turns on the hot water, my hot water suddenly ends and I'm in a freezing cold shower. So, yeah, that'll help me get to sleep. Oh, well. On the other hand, I might complain a lot, but look where I am. It's pretty hard to do better than this, eh? Uh, you know, I wish the facilities were better, but the scenery is unparalleled. Anyhow, since I'm the only person on this side of the campsite, I have to walk over a log here. Ooh, cool mushroom. 
Okay. <laughs> uh, I've got my bear precautions on full swing. The food's hanging up over there, well away from the tent. There's no food near the tent. Got my loudspeaker and bear spray just in case. And uh, I'm pretty sure there'll be no problems. It's generally not a problem. But, you know, I'm a little exposed here. So, uh, although there is a road and then a little more brush and then a highway, so that's some protection. Boy, this is beautiful, isn't it? All right, well, that's signing off for today. I think it was day 11. Day 12, I'll be back at Peaceful Valley. Day 13, I hope to have made it to Mont Laurier and to start the, uh, well, no, after a day of rest, the Le Petit Plain du Nord Trail from Mont Laurier down to where it ends near Montreal. Wish me luck. Go Jays go. Well, good morning. It's day 12. The sky's a little overcast today and there's supposed to be rain later on, but I don't have a long ride today, so bonus. Just in the process of packing up my gear. It's a process that can take anywhere from 15 minutes to two hours. <laughs> Anyhow, I have a special feature for today. Stephen has his first bunch berry. These are bunch berries. Lovely video there. Whoops. <laughs> These are bunch berries. Let's see if I can get that on the screen for you there. Right. And they're widely known to be edible. I've never eaten one. So I'm going to pick one. There we go. Oh, it's a little squishy. These might be a little overripe, I don't know. So, they're said to be mealy and tart and sweet. So I'm just squeezing this a little bit. It's got kind of a white interior. So, let's see what it tastes like. Yeah. <laughs> It tastes like nothing. Maybe it was too ripe. Let's try to find one that's less ripe, maybe. Yeah, that, this is a bit more solid. Hmm. There's a little crunchy seed in the middle. You can just crunch it, I guess. That's what I did. So, yeah. Not terrible, but not particularly tasty. I guess uh, if you dry them or cook them or whatever, they get sweeter. Uh, but right now they're just sort of blind. Anyhow, that was Stephen has his first bunch berry. Day 12. The madness continues. I hate having to ration water. Urgh. Well, I just got completely soaked in a rainstorm. Uh, got soaked to the skin. Now I'm at the uh, La Verandri welcoming booth, <laughs> which isn't really set up for sheltering people. Okay, I'm in what I would have to describe as the second worst motel room I've ever been in. Um, it's at Peaceful Valley. Um, I decided to come this far because, and only this far, because between Peaceful Valley and Mont Laurier, there's nothing. There's no campsites, there's no motels, nothing. There's a store in Grand Remu, and that's it. Maybe a restaurant no place to camp and also I was getting soaked by the rain so okay get a room here so this is the room okay and you know I don't need much I mean I've been camping in dirt for the last week 
but the bed still has hair on it. So, ew. So, I'll be sleeping on the floor. Floor's not that clean, but it's gonna be cleaner than the bed. So, ew. Just ew. Oh, just as I finished that last video, there was this big peal of thunder from outside, so I guess that's not thunder. I should mention, too, just how badly this room smelled. <laughs> um, I got in at around 2, and I just left the window and the door open the entire evening, afternoon and evening. It hasn't really helped. Uh, I had the air conditioner on, which sort of moved the air a little bit. The uh, fan, of course, doesn't work. One of the plugs doesn't work. Yeah. But it's only for one night. Just for one night. And then 50 kilometers or so, it'll be in Malaria and in a Super 8, which will feel like the Taj Mahal after this. Yeah. It's day 13, and as you can see, I'm on the road. On the highway, more like. This highway, I think it's 117, is the only route into the park. In fact, it's the only route up to uh, Valdor and the Clay Belt. The advantage is it's got really nice wide shoulders. So I actually feel pretty safe on it, even though, as you see, the cars are zipping by. Once I get to Mont Laurier, though, I'll be on the trail and no more cars. Yay! So, just shifting gears here. You might be wondering after yesterday what the worst hotel I was ever in was, or motel. And that was a motel out near the airport in San Francisco. The plan was get off the flight, get into the motel, then get where I needed to go the following day, which was up north, north of the Golden Gate Bridge. Beautiful area. A privilege to have been able to go there. But that motel. It was as bad as the one I was just in, plus it had bugs. This one at least had no bugs. It was super filthy, <laughs> but I had no bugs. So I'll give it that. I don't know what the one in San Francisco had, but I got bitten a bunch of times. And I feel fortunate I didn't unpack any of my luggage in there. <laughs> oh. oh, that room still has me coughing. Oh boy. Thirty kilometers to Mont Laurier. I'm in Saint Jean sur le Lac. It's about five, six kilometers outside Mont Laurier. I'm on the highway the whole time, so. Anyhow, that's gotta be the ugliest church. I assume they had a fire or something and that's their repair, but oh my. <laughs> It's day 14 and I'm tootling around Mont Laurier doing various errands like getting new gloves, chamois cream, put some air in the tires. I'll be getting a new sleeping mattress or sleeping pad because the other one no longer holds air. Interesting town. Clouds, by the way, are started out this morning maybe 50 feet above the ground, it's still really cloudy.
The radar from Environment Canada says that that storm will pass to the north of me, but my eyes say it's coming straight here, so I'm going to stay under a roof for a little bit and record a wee bit of video. I'm at kilometer 201, also known as the starting point for Le Petit Train du Nord. I already feel raindrops here. So this is the, uh, the path that goes down past Mont Tremblant all the way to Montreal, 201 kilometers worth. So here we are in Mont Laurier. And uh, some bicycle routes suggested there. I took one of them yesterday, actually. Just a short one around town. And here's the bike. And just so you have proof. Yeah, it's me. Other people getting ready down there to do some bike riding. Well, I think everybody really wants to wait out this rain, except for that nice couple who just took my picture and then for me, on my camera, I mean, <laughs> and then took off. So, looking forward to this. I got a 57 kilometer ride planned for today, which sounds like a lot compared to some of my previous totals. Sorry, I just tripped over a weed there. Um, but uh, isn't that much considering it'll all be flat and such. Oh, and I see somebody else riding with a big kit down there. I'll bet you they, do the loop and they're gonna come up. Well, maybe they aren't gonna come up here. But it's interesting, this is sort of a mecca for bike packers and bike tourers, so which is, makes it too bad that this place is closed. But oh well, anyhow, hanging out, waiting for the rain. I like Mont Laurier, I really do, but that main road is just behind me there now. On the, the, the Key Plan to Nord Trail. That's got to be the most dangerous road I've ever seen, especially in a town this size. It's crazy. It's four lanes wide, it's solid traffic, and there's hardly any way to get across the thing. Even this trail is blocked at that road. That is nuts. I had to go all the way up to Canadian Tire, which is way, way, way up at the top of the hill. Um, to get a replacement sleeping pad. I tried a bunch of other places. And so I had the pleasure of going all the way up and all the way back down that road. <sighs> Terrible. Um, there's a, a video podcast out there called Not Just Bikes that uses the term strode. It's trying to act as a street and a road at the same time and failing at both. That's what that is, and it's terrible. It's super dangerous. But I do like Mont Laurier, and, and like, check out this cuteness. I mean, isn't that something? Day 14.
Good morning, everyone. It's day 16, and yeah, I had to do the calculation again. So, I'm just outside Naminigua, where I stayed overnight last night in a commercial campground. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great. Had good services, but no drinkable water. Fortunately, there was a store in town, so it was open on a Sunday evening, so that was good. So this place where I'm standing here is of some significance to me because this is the furthest north I've previously cycled on the Petit Trent Nord Trail. Uh, it was out of Mont Tremblant, and I guess it was about 120 kilometer ride total. It was a fairly significant day for me. So for the next 80 kilometers or so, I'll be going over trail that I've already gone over before. here in Riviere Rouge, a place I've been a number of times before. That's the river back there. That's the town up there. But the main thing that has my attention is this sign here saying that there's major work taking place between Mont Blanc and saint Agathe, which is not today, but probably tomorrow's ride. Follow the detour by Route 117 at your own risk. That doesn't sound good either, so I'm going to have to look that up and see what's up. I do know that some of the people I was talking to earlier at Mont Laurier said that uh, they took an alternative detour and it was up and down and up and down and up and down, so... Hmm. Well, it doesn't look good no matter which way I go. So, I checked the website, I'm going to have to read it in more detail at leisure when I get into the site this evening. Okay. This is where the trail crosses the Riviera Rouge at La Macaza. It's uh, near where I did my training run earlier in the year. In fact, I came out along that road there. And I don't know if we can see it from here. It might be still behind a tree. There's a covered bridge over there. All right, there it is. So I rode over that bridge before coming out here onto this trail just up ahead and riding into Lavelle. What's interesting about that trip was that the back road that I took was a lot hillier than I had thought and I was thinking well gee it's just you know hillier here but uh, my experience now in the other areas of this region show that that was the rule not the exception that's important because I'm going to be doing another hilly route because of that detour well, it's the end of the day, 5.30 or so. It seems darker in this forest. Uh, I'm camping at La Belle et La Rouge, which is a campsite in a place called La Concepcion. Uh, it's about eight kilometers from the village, which is part of Mont Blanc, which I had hoped to go to today, but that didn't work out really. Um, why not? Well. I stopped at La Belle thinking I was going to have lunch there and I did not have lunch there because the restaurant, the little restaurant in the, on the trail closes at 2 p.m. So I was pretty unhappy about that because I kind of think, you know, well, I was looking forward to it. So anyhow, I sort of left, didn't take any pictures, didn't take any video, I didn't want to record them at all and started off down the trail and I got a phone call about eight kilometers later. I'd left my wallet there. So great. Um, 
So what, what to do? Well, my original plan had been to come here, just drop off my stuff, go to the, the little village of Montremblant, catch a bus, go to the main village, take the gondola up to the top of the mountain, buy a sticker, come back and saddle in. And then all of that was off because I didn't have my wallet. And uh, anyhow, pulled in here, trying to save the day, asked the guy if, if I could get a cab. Uh, the guy offers to drive to La Belle to pick up my wallet for me, which is really cool. So, uh, Camping La Belle and La Rouge is number one in my book. So, and it's also a pretty nice place. I mean, this is a campsite, a commercial campsite. Yeah, I know, you can't see the RVs stacked up and on end. So, anyhow, I decided not to go to Mont Tremblant. I don't know, tomorrow I might, depending. Tomorrow I have the detour, detour at St. Agathe. Uh, but otherwise, it's not that long a ride. I've booked a campsite there. Um, and we'll see. We'll see how it goes. That's it for now. Day 17, the way every other day has started. So I think this is the best of the campsites that I've been to so far. And it even has its own private walkway here down to the river, across the road from it. There's no RVs or anything like that in the campsite. There's no cars by the campsites. They're well spread apart. This is a canoe you can borrow. Because the kayak is gone. <laughs> I didn't expect to have company this early in the morning. What can you do? I'm sure this is a nice area just to walk down. There's another little path. Oops. The ubiquitous finger in the video shot. I had a good night last night. It's interesting when you're camping, whether it rains or not, every morning it's wet. Every morning it's wet. And this here is the Rivière Rouge. It's kind of hard to see in this light. There we go. Let's see if I can't just get a better view here without falling in. So it's nice and gentle through here. There's rapids in either direction, but from here it's really nice. Believe it or not, I've climbed this mountain, in fact, only about a month ago.
So that was my two hour mini vacation in Mont Tremblant. And you might be wondering what was that all about? It was about this. See, I picked up one of these back uh, when I was here, when I climbed the mountain with Andrea, in fact, about a month ago and I lost it. So I wanted to get another one to put on my computer. Uh, and this time I figure I deserve it. So I stopped, went up to the top of the hill, got my sticker, came back down, and now I'm on the road again. I'm petty that way. So I think I might have lucked out. This is where the detour should start. There's the construction equipment. There's the detour road. You can even see some tape. So maybe the detour is over? Oh, that would be nice. Well, I spoke too soon. How can that only be available weekends? That makes no sense. But this is not a weekend, it's like a cheese day, which is the most non-weekend day. So, oh well, to the detour it is. Okay, I did a loop up there, and I just saw some people coming the other way. I'm thinking maybe I can get through here. Okay, now I've reached a more serious detour that says the road is impassable. Hmm. Let's check and see where I am. Okay, the path diverges from the highway up ahead and follows a river and I imagine there's some bridges there. So I think what I'm going to do is take this exit, follow the highway until it meets up in about a kilometer or so. Bit risky, but they had me following the highway on the detour anyway, so, you know, whatever. Okay, I did the highway for a bit, maybe five kilometers. Not even, that was a bit of a nightmare. Fortunately, it was mostly downhill. So I've turned off here, it's a little road to a place called Ivory, no O, just I-V-R-Y. The trail crosses here, I don't know if it's passable, but we'll see. And if not, then the real detour is down at the end of this road. So one way or another, I'll be fine, at least so far as knowing where I am is concerned. I'm not sure about the hills still. Yep. There we go. It's hike a bike time again. Up to, I don't know, 8%, 9% hells of this stupid detour. Uh. All right, it looks like I'm back on my trail into Santa Gas, finally. That wasn't fun. Finally, Santa Gaff, a town with way too many hills. Day 18. Hard to count the many day, the many ways I hate Santa Gaff. I'm walking, just because this trail is a bit unpredictable. Headed out of Santa Gath. Santa Gath, by the way, is built on mountains. So you're going up and down and up and down. It's crazy. There's one bike trail. And 
you know, what I mean by that is the assigned route for bicycles through the town. And on that bike trail, there's a sign that says Tu Petit Train du Nord. So, okay, great. There's no forks or anything like that. No other signs. Well, that one bike trail takes me to the golf course. Which leads me here, hoping that this trail leads me to Petit Train du Nord. I have no coffee. For some reason, the coffee place was closed. I don't know why, Google says it. <laughs> I had a guy actually, what do they call it? Coal rolling, rolling coal on me yesterday. First time that's ever happened to me. That's where a pickup truck through some machination blows a thick black cloud of smoke at you. I had some guy in uh, Kazabaz who uh, try it, but he wasn't able to do it. This is the first one who was actually able to do it. Campsite. Book the campsite. They only let you book two days at a time. They get to the campsite, tons of open campsites. I wanted a bicycle campsite. The only things that were available on the website were you know, electricity and water. So I took that and charged some batteries. But anyhow, I think it's just a tourist trap, honestly. I got a pizza. They have a two for one offer. Uh, it turns out it's not actually two for one. You buy one, the second one will cost you almost as much as the first. <laughs> it's that sort of thing. So, you know, I might not complain as much if it wasn't day 18, but I've had so much to compare Sandy Gaff to. Like, for example, the campsite I was at yesterday. This morning I woke up some guy being very considerate didn't want to bother everybody with his phone call instead stood right beside my tent and had it not quiet either what a way to start the day i know i'm complaining i shouldn't complain i mean look where i am but you know i just have one advice for people never go to saint again Never go to St. Agatha. Do not leave the trail. Stay on the trail.
five o'clock exactly. And I'm arriving in St. Jerome. And I know it's kind of arbitrary. And of course, there's one last stop sign. There we go. And here I am, kilometer zero, and I've made the trip. And the beginning of Petit Trans, you know. And now to find my hotel. I've booked the Super 8 here. So what I'm probably going to do is cycle the 32 kilometers that remains to go to Montreal along this trail and uh, then catch the train home. It's going to rain tomorrow afternoon and all day Friday. Normally I would just hold up for a couple of days, but uh, I'd like to get home. There's no point holding up for a couple of days just to ride the last hundred kilometers so I think that's what the plan will be. I'm here at the train station in St. Jerome as you can see by the uh, raincoat and the cloud that's decided to start raining. It's going to be raining for a couple of days so instead of trying to ride my bicycle in the rain for these last few kilometers I've decided to take the train into Montreal and from there catch the train home and then drive back to pick up my bike, which I have stashed away out in the hills um, by my hotel. Pretty sure it'll be safe there. If not, <clears throat> I've kept the important stuff, so uh, I won't lose everything. So uh, that's it for the trip. Uh, it was a little bit more than uh, 700 kilometers with uh, a climb of about 3,600 meters. So that's, I think, quite a bit. Certainly for me, it's quite a bit. Uh, and it does show me that I could have gone further. You know, I've basically run out of time. Um, although I think I would have preferred a flatter route. Next time I do this, I'm gonna pick a flatter route. Um, you know, I'm getting too old for hills. <laughs> That's not true. I can still do the hills. It's a question of whether I'm enjoying doing the hills. You know, it's the, the whole thing, ride your own ride, right? Uh, next time, I think I'd like a, like a nice flat ride, maybe the Empire State Trail in New York the, or the Erie Canal Trail, something like that. So for now, so I'm just waiting for the train for now and uh, I'll do a follow up. Um, I've been sort of running through in my head, you know, doing a, a look at my gear, what I used, what I didn't use. I had a pretty heavy load this time, and I'd love to make that a lighter load next time. So that's it for today. Uh, that's it for the uh, on the trail videos, um, but stay tuned for the next section.